have Congressman Ryan Sinke joining me live here on the Anchor Desk. Thanks for getting up early for all our viewers, Congressman. Well, great to be with you as always. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot to talk about today. Um, some of our headlines recently have been on Pyramid Mountain Lumber and Roseburg yeah. Lumber in uh, the Missoula area and Sealy Lake uh, Valleys announcing their closures. One is going up for auction, and they estimate this might be a loss of, say, some 250 jobs. Well, it's not only jobs, it's also management of the forest. You know, and jobs in the Sealy, they're important jobs, uh, and, and being out in the woods is, is an important part. It's all, not only the lumber mill, but it's, you know, logging, moving, you know, the, the, the secondary, but also affects management of our forests. If you don't bring the, that timber out and harvest it, it's going to burn. And these smaller mills do a great job of making sure that they maintain the forest uh, in a sustainable you know, way. But when you lose those mills, then you're going to have an enormous amount of overgrowth every year, and in some cases millions of board feet. And, and that causes havoc in you know, watershed, environmental habitat, you know, the, the whole shoot and match. Yeah, and uh, talking about the environment and whatnot, we just had in the news this week uh, the latest on Flathead Lake. The Army Corps of Engineers isn't going to drop things down as much this year because the operators of the dam there say that they are, they're seeing about the same kind of conditions right now that they saw last spring when we had such a time and those lake levels hit um, just some drastic low levels by August. Yeah, and it's management. You know, you have Hungry Horse Dam, which is a dam and a reservoir. Then you have a lake. So you, there's plenty of water in Hungry Horse to make sure that lake is at full pool from the 15th of June until after the, after the holidays on, on Labor Day. I put in a bill to make sure that it does just that and make sure that the full pool is set up in 50, 15 June and all the way through summer we should have a lake that offers you know, recreational opportunity but safety too because when that pool goes down a lot of rocks all of a sudden appear that you don't know about you've always went through them and over the, over the top of them for years but you know as secretary i can tell you it would never have had problem you know we've never had that problem so it is management and i think they're paying attention now the articles that i was reading uh, some of the reasons they were uh, keeping it back was for um, fish species. They were concerned about the fish species. Well, you know, it's funny if, if, you, if you start flowing earlier and you use best science, you look at how much moisture is uh, in, in, the, in the watershed and you use best science to open or close the gates and keep the water consistent. But when you, when you don't act and it gets really late in the season, then the amount of water you have to push through, you know, will, will blow the fish out. But if you, if you manage well up front, mm -hmm. use best science, you won't have a problem in the flat lake so that's where that's where we're pushing I think the management now is, is paying attention because certainly we've been on them real awful hard okay um, let's move on to homelessness and housing Ouch. It, it's a crisis in just nearly many nearly many of our cities that we um, report on they're all trying to come up with different solutions but um, one recent survey that just came out said this is extremely complicated and there's no easy solutions well, you go back as why is the housing crisis here? Why are interest rates high? Because Bidenomics, let's, let's be clear. When you overspend in the federal government, it raises the, the debt. All of a sudden, interest rates go from four to six to eight. It's a problem. When you don't, we don't uh, use our woods and our re, re, you know, uh, resources correctly. So timber prices are, are up, building costs are up. It all adds to it. You know, there's ways to look at it, um, you know, incentivize, you know, building apartments. And look, the American dream is important. Uh, we can start there that, you know, the, to buy a house in ownership. And I think we're all looking at different ways of ownership, you know, the title's important, so maybe a fourplex with a title so you can gain title, so you can move up uh, in your life. 50-year mortgages, extend the mortgages so you can lower the monthly payment. But it comes from, from mismanagement of the economy when prices go up, inflation goes up, housing costs go up, and, and when interest rates go up, it's unaffordable for a lot of Montanans. Yeah. I want to move on to the southern border. The governor just sent some uh, Montana National Guard soldiers down to the border to try to help secure it. Well, and our northern border is a problem, too. Uh, from a SEAL perspective, you know, that northern border is so large. And there's so few people in it, people go across where, where Border Patrol's not. 
And one thing we can be clear, we have no border. I was just down in, in the border again. And what happens is people come across the border, they say, I live in fear. And they're processed within 24 hours someplace in America with a piece of paper that says, show up in Dallas in 2024. They'll get a work visa. And we don't know who they are. Because unless we have a database for prisons, which we do not, they simply get processed. And I want to be clear, the Biden administration has full authority to secure the border. It is written in law, and he has the resources. He is willingly and knowingly not securing the border and allowing millions of illegal immigrants in this country. And you see it in Missoula, Montana. You see it across Montana. It's costing hundreds of billions of dollars of resources crimes up fentanyl's in, in you have sex trafficking drug trafficking in almost every little city a lot of that is border uh, centric and our northern border remains a problem if you go to the browning and you ask uh, you know tribe you know what they see they see fentanyl coming across the, the northern border almost w without without stopping it so well, thank you so much, Congressman. We've gone up over our time here, but uh, we appreciate you coming and, and always speaking to the viewers. Well, and I remain an optimist. You know, I know there's a lot of bad news all the time, but I remain an optimist. We're a great country. You know, Reagan optimism is, I think, is important. I haven't seen anything that's not fixable. So I wouldn't just take a deep breath, but it, it's going to take courage. It's going to take leadership and commitment. All right. Thanks again so much for coming.